believe that my two strengths are common sense, which sadly doesn't always seem to be that common these days, and also that I have an incredible passion for our community. And that's something that I think that not everybody brings when they come to council. Quite often they'll have a single issue, but in reality, what makes our place such a beautiful place to live is the community and having a passion means understanding all different types of aspects of that community. I'm, I'm very determined to work very hard um, in a dogged way but also a consultative way to get good results. Um, I don't give up easily. And the second one I would think would have to be integrity. I think the two strengths I'll bring come from a mix of my background. I'm a parent, a small business owner, an educator, I um, also think the other thing is that I'm just a lover of everything the Northern Beaches has to offer. I think my first advice, piece of advice would be, make sure you ask lots of questions. Nobody expects you to know everything and trust me, you don't know everything. There's so many moving parts when there comes to council. So ask lots of questions because those staff members are passionate about the areas that they work in as well. If you think you have a new idea, Ask whether that idea has been tried before. I think it's really important to make sure that you find um, if something hasn't worked, there's the opportunity to try and find out how to make it work. The biggest one would be making myself vulnerable, opening myself up to criticism and trolls. My biggest fear, Natalie I'm running for council, I don't know, getting my hair cut, wearing a tie, I adore chocolate and I have to admit that when I was even in my 14 day isolation recently, wonderful people did sneak some chocolate off to me. Most people that know me know that I'm a big Seagulls fan. If it's been a good win, quite often I'll watch the replay straight away. I don't even limit myself to two viewings. It's the Franks Burger from JB and Sons uh, in DY. Love that. One of them is a motion that I passed a while ago now on the nighttime twilight economy. I could see that there has been issues in the past about people who want to have activities and then you've got other people in the community who don't want to hear anything. So I thought and did a lot of research on this one. The nighttime economy would be relevant, of course, to places like Manly that are used to having um, quite a vibrant community at night coming there for different things, whether it's music or activities. But knowing full well that sometimes in the suburban areas, there'd be places that people would like their families to go to as well. So being able to lock that kind of down into making it permissible. It's supporting the live music industry. And uh, so I think a, a vibrant live music scene is um, incredibly important for our youth um, and for life in general here. For that matter, I think um, you know live entertainment in general um, needs as much support as, as they can get. I know it's difficult in COVID times, but I think council can be doing a fair bit to support them. To ensure that our local environment is being managed in a way which balances the huge desire to be outdoors, utilise our environment, especially since the pandemic. I'm really enthused about being part of the process to both liberate that natural resource more for the community, but also to protect it for future generations. In addition to that, I feel like there's an opportunity to refresh how we collaborate and network as businesses on the Northern Beaches. A lot of people that don't know me well uh, assume that I'm an extrovert and I am definitely introverted. Most people don't know about me. I actually don't mind singing. I'd really love to be in a band one day. Was bringing um, awareness of the small business community to state and federal government. Involvement in running Zali's campaign and I'm very, very proud of the fact that we now have an independent, consultative. We employed 65 casual teachers who are looking or needing additional income after losing much of it during the school shutdowns and connected them with 100 disadvantaged children. 